that uh, because the economy is so bad, because uh, uh, most people believe that we're on the wrong track as far as the economy is concerned, of course culture will be part of the debate, in part because the left can't talk about their economic record. You look at the polls, even among Obama supporters, 65% said that the economy was a top issue. The second most important issue to Obama supporters, black Obama supporters, uh, was the Iraq war, 10%. Non-black Obama supporters cited the economy 63%, and also the Iraq war was a distant, uh, distant second. The number one reason that Obama got elected was because of the economy. The economy is lousy. This is the worst, worst economic recovery uh, in our lifetime. He'll be the first president, unless something dramatic happens, he'll be the first president to preside over a recovery where the economy has not done 3%. So the media will talk about abortion, they will talk about uh, same-sex marriage, they'll talk about everything other than the economy. So yes, it's going to be an important issue whether Republicans like it or not. Uh, I mean, I, I certainly agree with that. I think that it, it will always be an important issue for the left because when it comes to the left, the left's main argument for the left is we are more compassionate than the other side because they, they can't argue that their policies are particularly effective because right. they're not. So what it turns into is we care about you more. And if you look at the exit polls in 2012, Romney won on virtually every issue except for which candidate cared more about people like you. On that poll, he got absolutely destroyed. He lost that, that particular exit poll 82% to 18%, meaning a majority of Republicans thought Barack Obama cared more about people like them than, than Mitt Romney did. And that's largely why the Democrats want to talk social issues, because when you talk social issues, what you're really talking about is ruthless compassion versus standards. On the right, we actually have standards for human behavior. On the left, they don't bother with standards on human behavior. And so for the left, compassion is, is a winning argument. I do think that the left has pushed so far in terms of social issues now that they're now on a precipice where they don't even know they're on the precipice yet, but whatever they argue for next is so extreme that I don't think the American people are going to take it. If, if, if the next major social issue, for example, if they really want to talk abortion, this is not a winning issue for them. If, as long as the Republican candidate does what Carly Fiorina was not afraid to do in the last debate and say, okay, what Democrats want is abortion up to and past the point of birth. Right, if, if the argument is gonna be between heavy regulation of abortion and no regulation of abortion at all, most people are in favor of at least some regulation of abortion. And when it comes to you know, issues like same-sex marriage, that's basically a dead letter at this point. Uh, and, and the other big social issue that's now, right, the, the thing about the left is because they're, they're constantly pursuing utopia, and utopia is, is like the sun on the horizon, it's constantly regressing, there's no way to reach it. They, they're constantly looking for the next steps. So the next thing they're looking at now is transgenderism. Well, I mean, if you ask most Americans, and how many genders they think there are, most Americans will tell you too. And most of the Democratic <laughs> leadership will tell you there are an infinite number of genders, just like it says on Facebook. And so if that sort of thing were to come up in, in debate, I think that would favor Republicans. So we'll, we'll talk abortion, we'll talk contraception. I think that the, the, anything they can to misdirect away from the issues, they will. But I think the Republicans ought to embrace that fight. Actually, it's one of the reasons I think Ben Carson and Donald Trump are doing so well is because, not because they're like Mitt Romney and they have to, like they're tethered to the economy and they just have to keep coming back to that. No, they'll kind of go where the media takes them, but then they'll say things that the media doesn't particularly like, and they'll say it in ways that don't appear immoral or uncompassionate. I mean, this is, what, this is why Carson frustrates the hell out of the left, is because when he talks about social issues, he doesn't appear non-compassionate. He appears extremely compassionate, even as he's saying things that I would say in a massively non-compassionate way. <laughs> I mean, how, well, how do you dislike Ben Carson? I mean, what, a, what a great yeah. story, uh, raised by a single mom on welfare. Uh, he was a lousy student at first. Uh, his illiterate mother had him bring book reports that she couldn't even read. He didn't know that she couldn't read them. He turns himself around, becomes this world-renowned surgeon. I've seen him go down to Harlem and have street corner press conferences and talk about the number one thing affecting the black community. It's not racism, it's not cops pulling people over, it's the, it's the demise of the black family. 75% yeah. or so of black kids are born outside of wedlock today. That is a higher number than was the case even during slavery. During slavery, under one roof, a black kid was more likely to be born to a biological mother and biological father than right now. Wow. All right, well that moves us to the next uh, area, which is your favorite candidate among the Republican uh, candidates. Let's start with Ben. Okay, so there's there's my favorite candidate, or favorite candidate. Margaret Thatcher. What was that? Margaret Thatcher. Yeah, seriously. Uh, and and she's, then, she's dead and also British, so two strikes. Exactly. Uh, and then there's the one who I'm enjoying the most. So the one I'm enjoying the most is Trump. Of course. Because he's just enjoyable. I mean, it's, politics, I rem I, I'm still pretty young, I'm 31, but I, I remember a time before Barack Obama where I was actually ideologically inclined toward optimism. And, and now I've turned into the Joker from Batman and I just want to watch the world burn. I want to have giant piles of money and set them on fire and 
run after cars and chase the bumper, and, and I don't right. care if I grab it, I don't know, I won't know what to do with it once I do, but right. I have to chase the car. And that's the Trump part where it's like, okay, I don't really care what happens here, I just wanna watch him hit things. Yeah. Like they may be puppies, but yeah, you know, as long as he gets a nail every so often, I'm happy. Um, and so, so Trump is definitely the most enjoyable candidate. As far as the candidate who I like the best in terms of who's the most principled conservative, Ted Cruz is the most principled conservative. Um, and then we get to the question of who is the most electable. And it's a question I generally hate because it assumes that people have crystal ball knowledge. And the truth is that no one does. I mean, there is no crystal ball knowledge. The experts are all wrong almost all the time. In fact, this is true in pretty much every field, by the way, in every field. That, that involves any sort of predictive mechanism. Except, they, for, except for global warming. Yeah, except for global warming. But, but any, anything where you're talking about a moderate distance, like Larry and I do this professionally, so we can tell you what will happen tomorrow in politics, but neither one of us is gonna be able to tell you what happens in eight months in politics, right? We can tell you what's gonna happen in 20 years in politics, right, uh, the overall trend, but we're not gonna be able to tell you what happens in eight months. So whenever people say, who's the most electable, it's sort of a nonsensical question because, I mean, there were, there's a sizable group of people who thought John McCain was the most electable. So, you know, people say Marco Rubio is the most electable. I don't know that that's true. I see significant flaws in his candidacy. Uh, I think that he's articulate. I also think he doesn't have an edge. He's a very beta guy. He's not an alpha. Uh, people tend to want a, people. People tend to want a as president of the United States somebody who, who you feel like has a, an iron fist under the velvet glove. And with and with Rubio, I'm really not sure that that's there. And I think people like if you put him up against Hillary, for example. Honestly, I think that people will think she has more testosterone than he does. And that's, and which may in fact be biologically the case. You know, you know uh, uh, following up on that, Ben, I, I remember, uh, I think it was James Carville one time, he was angry at what he thought was some wussy Democrat. And he said, I wish Hillary would give him one of her balls. That way they both have two. <laughs> Tough crowd. I didn't say it, Carville did. <laughs> <laughs>